Okay, people, we are in Acts chapter 19. Um, I got a different book. This is a, this is the one I've been showing you. And then I pulled out my book. Uh, uh, Rose book of Bible charts and maps and timelines. And it's got all, all of his uh, journeys. The first, the second, uh, the third, and then his uh, journey to Rome, who some people would call a fourth missionary journey. Uh, and it's it's different. <laughs> and then I pulled out my home and thing, and, and it's different too. So I, I guess you got to take these with a grain of salt. But this takes you up into Galatia, the other one down here that I have. Uh, really just goes straight over. But where we're at now, I remember at the end of Acts chapter 18, uh, Paul started in Antioch again, went up. This is where you get the Texas Receptors, the, the received text. Uh, the King James Bible, the Lutheran Bible, uh, comes from Syria and Antioch and Syria. All right, so they go up through Galatia, and he's in Ephesus. And that's where we're at now. And remember, Apollos was in Corinth over here. And Apollos had been preaching at Ephesus, so there's a bunch of converts of Apollos um, at Ephesus. And they have the same... Uh, problem that uh, Apollos had, uh, which we're going to find out right here in a minute, is that they did not, um, they didn't have, uh, they've been baptized uh, with John's Baptist uh, baptism of re uh, remission of sins, uh, but they haven't received the Holy Spirit. Uh, they hadn't been saved yet. And they get the Holy Spirit a different way here. Uh, than we do today, and they, by the laying on of hands, and this starts the whole charismatic movement, the two, uh, you get the Holy Spirit after you're saved, and all of that, uh, which is uh, uh, not how we do it today, but you got to remember, the book of Acts is a transitional book. The Holy Spirit's going from the Old Testament where he left and came back to people uh, to the New Testament. And these were believers. Let's just read it. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now, these are Jews, uh, converts. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be an Holy Ghost, any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism, uh, which I believe is Acts 2.38 too. Uh, then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul, and this is where the big <laughs> controversy comes, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. This is the third and last time in the book of Acts you'll hear about uh, people speaking in tongues. It's always Jews. And uh, it doesn't actually say these are Jews, but then it gives the, the number. The, and all the men that were about 12 uh, representing the Jews, in my humble, unbiased opinion. The only time you'll see tongues spoken of is uh, because uh, tongues is for a sign. I'll just, I got it open to that. Uh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verse 22. Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, 
not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesy and serve not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. So tongues are a sign, and who gets a sign? Who needs a sign? Well, let's just go ahead and look at that. That would be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Who requires a sign? Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22 for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom the Jews require a sign we are Greeks or Gentiles we do not require a sign so this will be the last time in the book of Acts that you'll hear anything about anybody speaking in tongues as it goes more and more to the Gentiles less and less tongues are spoken they did speak it at the uh, church of Corinth and they were abusing it. Uh, they were not uh, using it wisely. Uh, that's another study in itself. And and he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when diverse were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of the way, before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of Tyrrhenius. This first mention of a school in Acts 2. And it's not a Christian school. This is a, uh, a pagan school or a school of philosophy. And this continued by the space of two years so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special, now get this, if you don't get anything else out of this chapter, get this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. I cannot emphasize how important Paul is uh, to our church today. He was written, he was given special miracles. Uh, maybe the laying on of hands to give somebody the Holy Ghost. And the, listen to this, verse 12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Oh, it's been a long time ago. Uh, I think it was Oral Roberts, but I'm not sure, was selling... Uh, little handkerchiefs you could pay you know ten dollars or whatever and they'd send them to you <laughs> and he said they'd heal you and of course this was given special miracles to Paul Paul was special remember the Lord uh, gave him the revelations and the mysteries in uh, Arabia Galatians chapter 1 all right, now this is a, a new paragraph. I do like the Bibles that have that in it. My my pew Bible didn't have it in it, so I like that. So we're starting a new subject here. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, remember I stated the vagabond motel. I can't believe they named that that. <laughs> Exorcists took upon them uh, to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests which do so. Let me tell you something. Don't mess with evil spirits, uh, especially if you not don't have the Lord. Like those ghost shows and stuff, those guys don't know Jesus. They're, they don't know what they're messing with. They're opening doors. Uh, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. You mess with demons and you don't have uh, the authority or you're not under the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to end up naked and wounded. 
And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts, these are witches, uh, brought their books together and burned them uh, before all men, and they counted the price of them, and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money now. Uh, just see how much money that was then. They burnt their witchcraft books. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Uh, and another paragraph stopping or starting, I mean. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. Okay, he's in Ephesus. And he goes back to Jerusalem. So he, this, some of these maps, they're good uh, help, but they're not, uh, they're not, they don't agree with each other. <laughs> so he had, sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and A Aristus. But he himself stayed in Asia for a, re, for a season. Oh, okay, so he sent them back. And the same time, there arose no small stir about the way, about that way. Uh, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, it's always about the money, follow the gold, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain into the craftsmen whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, these are idol makers, and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. Not only did they make a living, they were wealthy. Moreover, you see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul had persuaded and turned away much people saying that they're be no gods uh, which are made with hands. Paul was preaching against uh, against well, I lost my spot. He was preaching against uh, idol worship. Alright, verse 27. So that not only this craft this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all of Asia and the world worshipeth. This was their main god, uh, this Diana was uh, their main the main deity of Ephesus, I guess. Uh, and when they heard these th sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled uh, with confusion. Demons bring confusion, by the way. And this, uh, any of these other gods, Diana and all that, they're... If there's anything to them at all, uh, it's demonic. And demons always, sorry, my foot went to sleep. <laughs> uh, demons always bring uh, confusion, uh, fear. Uh, this is what you can, if you start messing with the occult, that's what you're going to get. And Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. All right, they're in this big uh, amphitheater, and uh, 
Paul's preaching and they're shouting, Great is the goddess of Diana. Great is the goddess of Diana. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he he would not adventure himself into the theater. Don't go in there, Paul. Uh, they're going to tear you apart. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. Some of them didn't even know why they were there. Uh, they just followed the crowd. And boy, don't you got a bunch of them out here. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of people will just follow the crowd. And they drew Alexander... And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward, and Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of Ephesus. For two hours they shouted out. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, this guy finally had to come in and calm them down. He said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of Ephes the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Uh, seeing that, then that, these things cannot be spoken against. Ye ought not ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. Don't tear the place down. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. He said they didn't say nothing against this uh, Diana. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and our deputies, let them plead one another. Go to the law. Let's take it to court. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly for we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. Now, we're going to get in trouble over this. There being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So whoever that guy was uh, must have been a, a good talker because he sure did. Um, appease the crowd uh, in this Ephesus. So we're at Ephesus. They're tearing the place apart. Uh, great is the goddess uh, Diana. And uh, that guy just appeased it. And that closes out Acts chapter 19. We'll start in Acts chapter 20 uh, next time. All right, I know I'm just going real quick through this. You can get a lot more in-depth studies than this on uh, YouTube or uh, do one yourself. But I'm just doing a survey of Acts, and I am really enjoying it and learning a lot. But that, uh, in Acts chapter 19, okay, in Acts chapter 2, uh, they get baptized with water, speaking tongues. Acts chapter 10, the Gentiles... Uh, the Holy Spirit falls on them while Peter's speaking to them and they speak in tongues. But Jews are present. Uh, tongues are for a sign and signs are for the Jews. Uh, uh, tongues are for a sign to them that believe not. And then in Acts chapter 19 right here, uh, the last time you're going to hear about the uh, gift of tongues in Acts is uh, Acts chapter 19. And these are the... Uh, disciples of Apollos and uh, they were baptized uh, under the baptism of John 
and they receive the Holy Spirit differently again. So you got it by water in two. You got it by uh, while he was preaching in 10. And you got it by the laying on of hands in 19. See the transition in the book of Acts? All right. You get your doctrine from uh, the epistles. Uh, you get your your main doctrine from there. All right, I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Lord bless you. Uh, read your Bibles. Have a wonderful day. I'm over 20 minutes. My goodness. All right, God bless you, folks.